Hello and welcome. I'm Gavin Hoey. I'm a freelance photographer and photographic educator. I'm also a ambassador for Olympus UK. I'm actually the portrait ambassador, which is really handy because this session is all about how to get atmosphere in your location portraits. Now, the photography show has gone virtual this year, so this, unfortunately, is a recorded presentation. But in order to stop it being really dry and boring, I've done two important things. Number one, I'm going to keep going even when things get wrong, as if I was doing this live. So for the next 15 minutes, I'm just going to keep talking and we'll see what happens. Then during the photography show itself, I'll be on the virtual stand with Olympus doing some Q&A sessions. So if you've got any questions, head over to the Olympus virtual Q&A stand and I'll happily answer them there. It would be good to meet you virtually. So what am I going to cover in my 15 minutes? Well, I'm going to talk about location portraits with atmosphere, how I got the atmosphere, things that worked, things that didn't. And I'm going to take you on two very different shoots to show you what happened. So let's dive into the first one. So the first shoot is a theme shoot and the theme is Bonnie and Clyde. Now, don't worry if you don't know anything about Bonnie and Clyde, you're not alone because at the time of shooting, I didn't know anything about them either, other than that they were American that they were from a little while ago and that they had guns and they were outlaws. That was pretty much it. And I'd explain why I didn't know anything before the shoot in a second. But when it comes to my sort of idea of what creates atmosphere, I think that comes fundamentally from having a story that you're trying to get across in some small way. So if you're just trying to do nice people with nice backgrounds, then that's great. But to really get some atmosphere, I like to have that little bit of a, a theme into my shots. So Bonnie and Clyde was the theme for this one. The reason I didn't know absolutely anything about it is because I didn't know anything about it. It's a secret portrait challenge organized by my wife, Sam, who is in the back of this car. So she'd spent weeks planning this and she really had planned it in total secrecy. I knew nothing. So I didn't know the, the props, the theme, the location, the styling, the time of day. All I knew was that I had to turn up here and bring my camera equipment. So I bought, I think, almost everything I own photographically in the back of my car, more or less, and, uh, which is kind of handy because I didn't know what I was going to walk into. I bumped into two models who just happened to be models we worked with before. So we've got Brian, who is our Clyde, and then we've got Sophie, who is our Bonnie. And they were brilliant. I mean, they had done some research. They had planned this way in advance. They knew what they were doing. The styling was all done by Sam. The car she'd provided as well. The location was the Gatwick Aviation Museum. And I was thrown in at the deep end. So I ended up using quite a bit of flash. I'll talk more about that as we go through this session, but it really was just great fun to do. And that's really the whole purpose of any photography shoot. If you're not having fun, you're not really doing it right, I guess. So that's what I was shooting, but I need to talk about how uh, things worked, how I got some atmosphere into that scene, because you can see it was pretty much laid on a plate for me, but that's not enough to get a shot with atmosphere. So I need to press some buttons to make this work. So let's see if I can actually do this. One second. Let's see. Yes, it's going to work. Good. Okay, there we go. So it all started with this car. So this is our friend's car. I didn't know he owned it. He's actually restored it and it was in his garage. So once Sam found that, the whole Bonnie and Clyde thing fell into place because this is exactly the sort of car that Bonnie and Clyde would steal to go and do their... their criminal deeds, I guess you might call them. So it's the perfect car for the scene. Then there are the models. So uh, these two guys are absolutely wonderful. And once they were all done in their, uh, their outfits, which Sam had organized, then they looked the part. So that really just left me and light, the light, because the light is the most important part of any photo shoot. It really is, because if you've got good light, you're going to get good photos and hopefully some atmosphere. If you've got bad light, you're probably going to get bad photos and very little atmosphere. And if you've got no light whatsoever, you've got no photos. That's pretty much it, isn't it? Which is why light is the most fundamental thing in photography. So I started out by trying to use just the, the ambient light, the daylight. And that's normally how I will begin, because if the ambient light, the daylight, is exactly what you need, why on earth would you want to go to the trouble of adding anything else? That kind of makes sense. 
In this case, however, it really wasn't quite what I'm after because if the lighting is just flat and there isn't any sculpting to it, well, that might be exactly what you want, but it's not really giving me the atmosphere. I wanted to have something with a bit more drama and excitement, and this light, nice as it was, wasn't what I was after. So once I've established that, the next thing to do is to work out how little ambient light I want to keep and how much flash I want to add in. And I do that by just taking a series of pictures. So this shot is manual exposure, a couple of stops underneath the ambient light, and that's what I will be recording for ambient light. Obviously, our models are underexposed, and that's where the flash comes in. So the flash lights the models, and in this case, a bit of the car, and the ambient light lights the sky and the background. That's how it works, effectively two exposures in one. So once you've worked that out, you're okay. I think I actually tweaked the exposure just a little bit, just to try and get the balance a bit more. Yeah, I did with that one. So um, that, that's kind of my happy medium. And you're pretty much good to go. That's more or less it with flash. As long as the flash and the subjects don't change distance, your exposure is going to remain pretty much the same. So I took a whole bunch of pictures, but really we can't go much further in this conversation be talk before we talk about the most obvious and slightly controversial part of it, at least here in the UK. We need to talk about guns, because you can't do Bonnie and Clyde without guns. They're just fundamental. They are, they're part and parcel of that entire thing. So the guns weren't real. Let's be absolutely clear. They were replica guns and airsoft guns. And we had a gun marshal with us at all times who was checking the guns, making sure that even though we'd checked them a dozen times, they were all perfectly safe. And they were perfectly safe. So that was all covered. But I was most concerned that we were going to get some complaints about the guns because this was going to be a video. A lot of the work I do ends up on YouTube as a video tutorial, and this was one of those. And sure enough, we got complaints about the guns. We got complaints that they were the wrong sort of guns. Yeah, wrong guns, apparently. So those that know tell me that they are the wrong ones. And they're almost certainly right. But hey, we're in the UK. That's what we got. That was, I mean, we were lucky to get that, really. But we got a lot more complaints about Brian's cigarette. Because back in the day, he wouldn't have had the filter. Yeah, so when you're doing a shot like this, you, and you, you're going for that kind of period uh, shot, you have to think about, are you getting things absolutely right? And is that really important? To me and to Sam, it wasn't that important. It was in the style of Bonnie and Clyde. That's kind of where we went, really. We did have some other props, of course, as well. We had cases and cameras, and it was great fun. I mean, the whole purpose of this is to have fun. If you're not having fun with your photography, you're not doing it right. And we had a fantastic time shooting these pictures. But it's really important when you're shooting multiple people to remember to stop and actually do some individual pictures. So one of the ways you're going to get some atmosphere from your shots is by working with your model, your subjects, by having them understand what you need. And if they're really tired and worn out, you're not going to get anything useful from them. So by giving them a break and just working with one model for a while and then swapping over, I was able to do just that. So we had some pictures with Brian and we had some pictures with Sophie. And as you can see, I used some smoke. I love smoke. I use smoke an awful lot in my photography on location and even more in my studio. It really adds some atmosphere by adding some texture to the shots. Not sure it added a great deal to these pictures, but it definitely, definitely did something. I, I, I kind of feel that, yes, it was worth doing and worth setting up and worth bringing. But when I'm working away on a shot like this, I'm fo focusing on the models, I'm focusing on the foreground, I'm focusing on the, the smoke. There's loads of things going through your head. And what I didn't see was a bit of the modern world creeping in. So just, I think, if I get this right, it's about there somewhere. Uh, you should be able to see um, my softbox has crept into the scene and it's reflected in the, uh, the wheel arch, which was all sh super shiny and lovely. So a little bit of Photoshop had to go into these to remove things like that and various other bits of the modern world that did creep in from time to time. But it's also possible to get yourself in a position where you have lead feet. We just don't think about moving. You get stuck in the same position for shot after shot. And of course, atmosphere comes from location. 
I chose the previous location because it fitted the theme. This was a different look and feel and completely changed how we shot the photos. The sun even came out briefly, uh, which was kind of nice. And we got them doing something. So, you know, if you want somebody just sat there and looking lovely, that's great. But if you want some atmosphere, there needs to be some sort of interaction with your subject in some way. Give them something to do. So we've got Brian to fiddle inside of the car. He knows nothing about engines. He didn't actually touch anything, which is kind of good. He just looked like he did. Occasionally, I'd get it wrong. So here again, uh, slight mistake. Can you spot the bit of modern world that's crept in? Yes, I've got the goalposts just off to the left-hand side. Now, I could clone those out in Photoshop. It wouldn't be that difficult. Or I could put these two behind something timeless. And the most timeless thing you can photograph is the sky. The sky doesn't age. It's always the same. Uh, the skyline might age, but the actual sky really doesn't. So get down low, look up, makes for a powerful picture as well. And of course, getting them to do something, run into the car, imagine they're being shot at, imagine there's a shootout and they're firing away, was just great fun. Fantastic way to end the session and ended up with some of the best pictures from the day just doing that. So there we go, that was the first little location where we got some atmosphere by working a scene, coming up with a theme, applying a bit of atmospherics, this time we're going to take you somewhere very different, with a very different feel and a very different shooting experience from my point of view. So let's go. So this is a place called Crossness and Crossness is on the banks of the River Thames, just sort of northwest of Dartford, I suppose. And it is quite a remarkable location. It is in fact a Victorian sewage pumping house. Yep, you heard me right. It was for pumping sewage from London into the River Thames as the tide was going out and getting washed out into the North Sea. Out of sight is out of mind. They don't use it anymore for that. It's being restored. And parts of the building have been restored with this, I mean, amazing Victorian painted ironwork. It's just gorgeous for what is quite a utilitarian building. Uh, and then other parts have been left to uh, just naturally age, which of course are the bits that I've really enjoyed as a photographer, such as the, the upper floor here. Quite a fantastic place, loads of light, interesting flooring. I'll talk about that in a second. This was a great shoot. So this was a bit different from my normal shoots. So normally we, we kind of plan everything and it's me and my wife Sam and the model and a makeup artist and that's pretty much it. This was a workshop we ran for Olympus. So Olympus is great and one of the reasons I ended up working with Olympus I think as much as I have is what drew me originally was their fantastic events. They lay on so many great events you can't really not find one that is to your style of photography. Obviously, things have been a bit different in 2020, but nonetheless, this was a great event because they let me sort it all out myself. Choose the location, choose the models, choose the outfits, everything. So we had the amazing Charlotte. Charlotte has a bit of a style, a kind of steampunk Victoriana kind of style. Some of the clothes she provided herself, some we added to with things that we had, and everything just came together at this incredible location. Thing is, what about the light? Because the light is absolutely critical. Well, the light was really nice. Uh, and in the morning, the guys got some fantastic shots just using the window light. But by the afternoon, um, it kind of tailed off somewhat. And to create a shot like this, I had to use some artificial light. So how do I go about creating a shot like this? Well, just as I did when I was doing the Bonnie and Clyde shoot, it starts with the ambient light. Taking a look at the ambient light and asking myself the important question, is this light what I want? In the morning, it was great, but this was a workshop and we ran it twice. In the afternoon, not so good. So the afternoon people had a different experience to the morning people. That's just how it goes. So in the afternoon, what we ended up doing was exposing for the ambient light for the bits that we wanted to keep, which is really just the windows. Those incredible windows were old, dirty, distressed, beautiful. So I exposed for the window and pretty much everything else is just 
black is just almost completely gone. That's where the flash comes in. A flash with an egg crate grid just to control the light so it doesn't spill absolutely everywhere. And that gives that nice vignetted edge. And modern lights are powerful enough that you can light a scene like this with a single flash. Quite remarkable how good flash technology has become. And that worked really nicely just to produce beautiful pictures. But why stop there? Once you've gone to that trouble, why not just turn to the side and have that? So this is exactly the same picture. All I've done is I've just turned 90 degrees to the side, moved the flash round, and we end up with something completely different. The location is giving this atmosphere. The styling is giving it atmosphere, and the lighting is giving it atmosphere. So those things are all working together, but it's not the only thing you can do to create atmosphere. So one of my favorite ways, I touched on it earlier, is smoke. So I have quite a lot of smoke machines. In fact, I've got, I've probably got too many smoke machines. I have different smoke machines for different jobs. This location, I actually asked before we used it just to be sure it would be safe. I mean, silly really, because the place used to be full of steam. But yes, smoke machine on location. The flooring is uh, hollow. It's cast iron grids and the smoke just came up from underneath. So Sam's underneath with the smoke machine firing it straight up in the air. Absolutely beautiful. And if I get this right, I should be able to show you a little video of, and you don't need to hear it, it's just the sound of the smoke machine going off. <laughs> Lovely Charlotte being surrounded by smoke. Now it's a short upright video because it was for Instagram. Let's see if we can play it again. Uh, there we go. Absolutely gorgeous. So loads of smoke, loads of atmosphere, bit of flash going off, and you end up with some incredible pictures like that, which I need to pause before it goes on to the next one. There we go. So that's lighting that I provided, location, outfit and smoke, adding that extra layer of atmosphere. And it looks gorgeous, absolutely amazing when you add some smoke into the scene. If you've never played around with smoke, backlighting smoke is the key, making sure there's a light behind the smoke to, to make it stand out. And obviously smoke against a dark background is more visible than a light background. Workshops are great. I really love doing workshops. I can't wait until we can start doing them again. Sadly, not really happening at the moment. Uh, but you get to meet a whole bunch of great photographers and get some great photos along the way. So everybody is getting shots like this, except, well, me, I got that one, I suppose. Um, but uh, that's the joy of a workshop. When you're running them, you're actually not taking the pictures. You're enjoying setting them up and watching others do a better job than you've just done. But occasionally you get lucky with the, the atmosphere. So right at the end of the day, for the last group, for the last setup, the sun just dropped exactly to the right height to come through the windows. And we had this gorgeous golden light beaming through. I knew it wasn't gonna be there for long. We had to work quickly. So I go through my exact same set of steps again. First things first, is the ambient light good enough? No, I'm losing all the details in the window. It's not really what I'm after. Okay, let's drop the ambient light level down. Everything is now really dark on Charlotte. So let's put a flash in front of Charlotte and light Charlotte with the flash. Terrific. And then we'll frame this better and give her a prop so that the flash isn't actually in the scene and create something like that. All of that was done in the space of probably less than a minute because A, we didn't have much time and B, Everybody else wanted to take that photo as well, and I can't really blame them. So there you go. There's some of the ways I can create atmosphere in my portraits by using interesting locations, by controlling the light in the scene, by using props and styling, and of course, adding some atmospherics with smoke. Now, hopefully you found this useful. If you have, terrific. We've got some fantastic content here at the Olympus stand. So come and join us, come and meet the team, come and ask us some questions. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.